Let's take a look at the 2.4 to 2.7 quiz review. Directions for the first two. State the possible rational roots for each equation, then factor each. So possible rational roots occur at C over D, where C represents the factors of the constant. So the factors of negative 3 are plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. D represents the factors of the leading coefficient, which is just 1. When this happens, when the leading coefficient is just 1, C over D is simply equal to C. It's the same as C because it's 1 over 1 and 3 over 1. So we have plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. Then it asks us to factor. So what we're going to do is we're going to do synthetic division. And once we find one factor, we can just uh, use the remaining quadratic e um, equation to factor that or use the quadratic formula if necessary. So let's start with 1. And we list our coefficients 1, negative 5, 7, and 3. Bring down the 1. 1 times 1 is 1 plus negative 5 is negative 4. 1 times negative 4 is negative 4 plus 7 is 3. And 1 times 3 is 3, and I forgot a negative. Hope you all realized that. Uh, 1 times 3 is 3 plus negative 3 is 0. And so... 1 works, which means x minus 1 is a factor. And this remaining part, sorry, this remaining part, because the uh, remainder was 0, is the other factor. So that's x squared. We were at cubed. We divided. So we're now at x squared uh, minus 4x plus 3 is equal to 0. And then we can factor this quadratic So this is x and x. It's a positive, so we need two positives or two negatives, but we know we need two negatives because of this one. And then 3 and 1. And so that's factored. Next one. C are the factors of the constant. So the factors of 15 are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 5, and plus or minus 15. D are the factors of the leading coefficient, so that's plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3, which means C over D is all combinations of C over D. So we have, we'll do everything, uh, one, so we'll do 1 over 1 and 1 over 3. And then we'll do 3 over 1 and 3 over 3. But 3 over 3 is just 1, so we don't need to rewrite that. Then 5 over 1 and 5 over 3. And then 15 over 1 and 15 over 3. 15 over 3 is 5, and we already have that, so we don't need to write that. So we have these different combinations. And we could try synthetic division, which in most cases I would say is a good idea. But we notice that this one is a quadratic-like equation. It has an even coefficient and then half of that and then a um, constant. So I think we might be able to factor this kind of like a quadratic, even though it's to the fourth power. So we can think 3x squared times x squared. That will give me the 3x to the 4th. And then our factors of 15 are 1 and 15 and 3 and 5. This is positive and this is positive, so we want two positives. And thinking through this, it seems like to get the 15, we should put a 3 here, a 5 here. We can check that. We have 5x squared plus 9x squared does give the 14x squared. These two don't factor any further, so really this is our answer for the factoring part really didn't use uh, the rational roots at all. If this were a normal question, we're just trying to factor or we're trying to graph. If we notice we can factor this way, we don't even go into the possible rational roots.
We just do it as efficiently as possible. All right, the third one here says divide. We can do long division, but better yet, we can do synthetic. And remember what we do is we take the opposite of this value, so negative 1. And then we set up for synthetic. We put our coefficients here, so we have 1x cubed. We have negative 9x squared. We actually don't have an x term, so there's a 0x and a 17. So we're going to divide. Sorry, I put this negative 1 in the wrong place. That should be down here. So bring down the 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1 plus negative 9 is negative 10. Then we take negative 1 times the negative 10 is 10 plus the 0 is 10. And negative 1 times 10 is 10, negative 10 plus 17 is 7. And so our answer, you should write your answer out in polynomial form. This is going to be x. We had a cubed, so we're dropping down to squared. x squared minus 10x plus 10, remainder 7, or plus 7 over what we were dividing by. All right. This next one, state the given binomial is a factor of the given polynomial. Well, there's two ways we could do this. Uh, we could take positive 9 and plug it into m because of the theorem that we learned. Um, the remainder theorem. Uh, and whatever we get uh, will be the remainder. And if the remainder is 0, then it is a factor. I mean, if we get 0, if we plug 9 in, um, it is a factor. If we don't get 0, it's not. Or in this case, I actually think synthetic division is going to be quicker. So we're going to have our 9 here. We're going to have all of our coefficients. So 1, negative 4, negative 36, negative 71, negative 99, and 81. And we're going to divide synthetically. We bring down the 1. 9 times 1 is 5. Sorry, is 9. Plus negative 4 is 5. 9 times 5 is 45. Minus 36 is 9. 9 times 9 is 81. Plus negative 71 is 10. 9 times 10 is 90. Plus negative 99 is negative 9. And 9 times negative 9 is negative 81. Plus 81 is 0. Uh, so is it a factor? It is a factor because we've got a remainder of 0. So yes. All right, describing the end behavior. This is when we have our odd and even degree with positive or negative. We know that an odd negative is up, down. So up on the left, down on the right. Uh, this is an even. So we know even, and we're looking at the degree, even goes in the same direction. And it's negative, so it's down. So this is a down, down. Down on the left, down on the right. This is an odd positive. So they're in opposite directions. And the left is down and the up is right. So down on the left and up on the right. And then this is even and positive. We know they go in the same direction. And since it's positive, they both go up. Number 9 and 10, write a polynomial function of least degree with integral coefficients that has the given zeros. You do not need to carry out the multiplication. Well, if these are zeros, are zeros, then the factors are x minus 1, x minus 4, x plus 2, and x plus 3. Write a polynomial function, so we'll write f of x equals this. If we wanted the full polynomial function, uh, we could multiply these out. We'd probably multiply these first, and then these, and then whatever the answers are, you could multiply together. But it says you do not need to carry out the multiplication in this case. For number 10, we know if we want integral coefficients, then if root 6 
is a zero, then so is its conjugate, which is negative root six. And so now we do the same thing as nine. Now that we know that, this is x minus one, and we'll write g of x equals, because we want a function, x minus root six and x plus root six. If we were to multiply these out, it's definitely easier to multiply these out first because this is in the form a minus b times a plus b, which is simply a squared minus b squared, so it makes it easier to multiply out. Number 11, a polynomial function with rational coefficients has the following zeros. Find all additional zeros. Well, if it has rational coefficients for irrational numbers, the conjugate will also be a zero, so three minus root six. And for imaginary numbers, the conjugate will also be a zero, so one minus two i. Our last couple state the zeros and graph the following functions. So when we are graphing to find the zeros, we have kind of three options. We can do C over D and synthetic division. We can use factoring by grouping, or we can do if the function is quadratic-like. This one does factor by grouping because we notice we have the x plus 5 if we factor things out. So we are going to uh, do factoring by grouping, and if the third term's negative, we usually put it as plus a negative. So we'll group these two together and these two. In this first group, we can factor out an x squared, and we're left with x plus 5. In the second group, we want an x plus 5, so we'll factor out a negative 1, and then that's x plus 5 which means our equation is y equals, we can factor the x plus five out of both. We're left with x squared minus one. And we can factor that x squared minus one. It's x plus one times x minus one. So our zeros are at negative five negative 1 and 1, so we can graph those zeros, negative 5, negative 1 and 1. There's no special symmetry because they're not all odd or even degree. We can find the y-intercept. The y-intercept actually is just the constant, so it's negative 5. And it might be helpful to find some other points, maybe negative 3. So if we plug in negative 3, we get, we're going to plug it into our function. So we have uh, negative 3 cubed is negative 27. 5 times negative 3 squared. So negative 3 squared is 9 times 5 is 45. Minus negative 3, which ends up being plus 3, minus 5. So let's think through this. These two together are 40, and then 40 minus 27 is 13, plus 3 is 16. So at negative 3, we're at 16. We could plug another point in. Uh, we could plug in negative 4 or negative 2, uh, but we'll just stick with that for right now. Plug the other ones in might get us a little more accurate answer, but there is a sketch of the graph. And then the last one, we do need to use Z over D because we don't have, uh, we can't factor by grouping and it's not quadratic like, so C plus or minus one and plus or minus three, D plus or minus one plus or minus three, so C over D, you have 1 over 1, 1 over 3, 3 over 1, and 3 over 3 is just 1 again. So we have only have these six options. So we can go ahead and do synthetic. So we have 3, negative 4, negative 14, negative 4, and 3. Let's start with 1, see if that works. So 
So 1 doesn't work, but it, again, from before, we know that the point 1, negative 16 is going to be on there. That might be helpful later. Let's try negative 1. All right, so that was a remainder of 0, so that is a factor. So we can say this is x plus 1. Um, and then this is 3x cubed minus 7x squared minus 7x plus 3. We need to continue factoring. So we can actually do this uh, again. Now we have uh, new synthetic. So we have 3, negative 7, negative 7, and 3. 1 didn't work here, so it's not going to work there. And the next one, negative 1 worked. It could actually work again. So let's try it. Bring down the 3. And it did work. So we now have the x plus 1. This works, so we have another x plus 1. And then 3x squared minus 10x plus 3. We're going to try to factor that last part a little bit further. We're going to have room here. This x plus 1 is, we can just write it squared since there's two of them. And then we have 3x and an x. And it looks like this is going to be x minus 3 and minus 1 which gives us zeros of negative 1, multiplicity 2, 1 third, and 3. So negative 1, 1 third, and 3. 1 third is about there, and then we have 3. And notice this is multiplicity 2, so at this point here, that's going to um, not cross over, but kind of bounce back to where it came from, whichever direction that is. Uh, our end behavior, this is even and positive, so they're both going to be up. So it's going to be here. Our y-intercept, running out of room here, our y-intercept is 3. So we have a point... Now this is really spread out, so y, we have a y-intercept about 3, this is 5, so 3. Then it might help to find something else in here, actually. Um, this point we mentioned earlier, 1, negative 16, that's in there. And then we could also do 2 uh, to help us get another point to make it a little more accurate. In fact, I'm going to do synthetic division to find that might be easier, so we're going to bring down the 3. So it looks like it's going to be negative 45. So 2, negative 45, which is down here. And now we can draw the uh, graph. Remember, at negative 1, this multiplicity was 2, so it actually comes off here. It doesn't go through. It bounces off. Now it has to go through a y-intercept and then goes through our 0 at 1 third. It's pretty steep. Turns around here uh, and would look something like that. And there's our review.